What's up, everybody? Check this out. My next guest on the podcast is going to be activist Eden Alex Enamorado. Now, we shot this podcast before he was arrested following an assault on a motorist at a protest in Victorville. He's in jail now and, and going through some, some uh, legal issues. <laughs> For anyone thinking of attacking street vendors, this is what's going to happen. You know, you're going to have a major backlash. You won't be able to come out of your house. So we're outside the mayor's house because they are spending 600000 to target street vendors. On the podcast, like again, uh, it was before he was arrested, we went back and forth on certain issues, on cops, on, on, on social issues. So I hope you guys dig it, man. And uh, Alex, saying you, sending you love, brother. And for my fans... Check, check it out. Let me know what you think, all right? What's up, everybody? Hey, this is Willie Barcena, and welcome to my podcast, Willie Barcena's Drop-In. Why do we call it Drop-In? Because we have people to just drop in, and we talk about their things, man, whether they're actors, whether they're musicians, activists. Like tonight, we have a cat that, man, he just uh, started watching him on social media, and he just... This guy is like a, a one-man movement, man. And uh, uh, his, his name's Alex Enamorado, which I thought it was a fake name. But Alex, it's your real last, your real apellido, right? Yeah, Enamorado, which means yeah. I'm in love. Isn't yeah. that what it means? I'm in love? That's what it means. Man, that's a cool name, bro. That's, <laughs> I, 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 and I really thought that, yeah, I made it up. That's why. But re really cool, man. First, Listen, man. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna show something uh, I'm gonna show the the audience what you do, okay, and then I want to talk about I want to talk that for a little talk about that uh, a little bit, and then I kind of want to talk about you, bro, sure. of what got you uh, to have that uh, I mean that fire to do what you do because sure. not everybody's you know uh, I, I, you know a lot of us you know, want to make change, but there's a few yeah. people who actually go and, and, and get down and dirty, and, and, and you, you do that, brother. Um, X, man, we got, you, got, you got a clip we can show them? Shocking cell phone video shows a man with an ax destroying a street vendor's fruit stand in Woodland Hills. Yeah. Like, Monday? We seen Daniel today and we're not done with him. Today was Daniel McGuire's preliminary hearing and Alex Eden and I, we served him with the civil rights lawsuit for the hate crimes that he committed. Remember Daniel J. McGuire, who we took a tamborazo outside of his house? <laughs> on national news across the country, and we organized a protest outside of his house where he called the cops on us when he ended up getting arrested. And well, since we pushed, he got arrested for felony assault. Christian was able to obtain a restraining order for five years. He then he sold his house and moved out of state. He had to fly back for sentencing, forced to pay back all the stuff to the street vendor. And now he's been served with the lawsuit for civil rights violation and hate crime. And thanks to you all, we've been able to help both street vendor victims that were antagonized by Daniel J. McGuire with thousands of dollars. And to anyone thinking of attacking a street vendor, this is what we do. Protect street vendors at all times. Damn, bro. Wow. You see, this is this is uh, for uh, for all my people out there. This is what I'm talking about. This is what, what captivated me when, I, when, I'm, when I'm, I was watching TikTok. I don't know if it was TikTok or Instagram, bro, yeah. but I was like, whoa. And then I, I've seen more videos and more videos, and I see that, you know, it, at first you think, oh, there's a cat that just that went out of his way to do something, you know, to look out for somebody. But this seems to be your calling, bro, right? I think so, man. I think this is, uh, it feels good, you know? It feels good when, when we do this, and uh, it's definitely, uh, how, I guess it's all coming back full circle, you know? It feels like this is not just my calling, but... I'm just, I guess you can say I'm standing on, on the shoulders of giants. You know, I've learned from a lot of good people, and I'm just doing what I was taught. And uh, I think this is what the people want me to do. Well, what do you mean by full circle? Like, I, I, don't, I mean, where's the beginning of that circle? I mean, just um, 
you know, when I was, I, I mean, if I go back when I was a little kid, you know, my parents were religious. I'm not religious anymore, but uh, they would have me giving speeches in front of 200 people when I was five years old and, and learning how to talk to people. My parents were Jehovah's Witness, so I was knocking on doors, oh, talking dude, to people. That's... So all that was transferable skills. And then just, and then, then I, when I was, you know, in the middle school, I got involved with, like, in the whole gang stuff and then uh -huh. just basically protecting my friends because that's how I got involved. You right, know? My, right, right. my friends were getting jumped and I got, I became kind of like a protector and I got involved with, you know? Uh -huh. So I remember my older brother who passed away, he used to tell me like, Alex, you got a lot of great potential. Just do something positive with it, you know? Right. And I think that's how it just came back full circle, you know? Well, I can see how Jehovah yeah. Witness, some of that Jehovah Witness energy uh, can help people. Because you guys are relentless, man. Yeah. Like, I, honestly, I could see how knocking on so many doors and probably a hundred of them don't open them. And then yeah. probably that one little door that opens and you're like, hey, I got something to say. And then they close it really quick. So that, that I'm sure that made you tenacious. Yeah. You know? And like in a weird way, uh, the Jehovah's helped build your, that uh, that character of like, like, like you're at, when you get on something, you're like a pit bull. Because Jehovah's Witnesses, bro. Yeah. I've always said, you know, uh, I put my money on Jehovah's because they, they, they're, uh, you know, nobody goes door to door like that, brother. But I, I, I could see, I could see that, man. And for those of you who, uh, we all have, we all, everybody has a Jehovah Witness joke. It's funny how, like, in real life, you can, you can, uh, you can influence somebody. Yeah. But you know, so as a kid. As a kid, man, uh, you say you started as a Jehovah. W were you born here? Nah, my parents came here when I was like eight months old from Guatemala. Okay. So I was born in Guatemala, but I was raised here. I, I, I've only been to Guatemala once, and I, it wasn't until I was like 19 that I went to Guatemala for like three weeks, and that's it. I've never been to Guatemala more than that. I've always grew up in L.A., and that's this is all I know. Right, right. Yeah. No, I, I get it, bro. I came here. I was I was six, seven years old when I got here from Mexico. Uh -huh. You know, I saw oranges in, in, in Bull Heights, bro. Damn. So I came from that immigrant family, and it's funny because every time I watch, um, when I when I see you and other cats, because there's a couple of you out there, man. Yeah. That 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 are that that have that um, which I I call it a calling, man, to uh to look out for the little guy. Uh, and and uh, a Latino yeah. who's a vendor, uh, um, you know me. I remember when 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 I see it, it's it's such it's so refreshing, bro. Because when I was a kid, it was uh, the Mexicanos that m my generation didn't make noise, man, because they were like, "Cállate, cállate," you know. Mm -hmm. No, I got real. You know, when you're in stores or somebody treats you bad, it's like, Shh, just, yeah. just get out of here, you know, because. Of of uh, you know the racism that's out there, and yeah. then always the uh, you know the uh, the Latinos didn't want any problems. Yeah. But the new generation, now we said your generation, my son's generation. Uh, I, I remember when when my ex graduated from college, and I went to a couple buddies who were graduating college at the time. This was like 15 years ago, uh, maybe 20 years ago, uh, and I would see a lot of Latinos uh, 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 graduating. From uh, yeah. from uh, colleges, you know USC yeah. and, and UCLA, the Cal State, uh, uh, you know. So so yeah, it, I think you're a testament to that, to that. And I see it like Wave. a tsunami, man. Yeah. I see your generation is like a tsunami. You know, it's like a it was it's a small swell that you can't see, you know. But but it's it, it, and then the, you know the the group behind you too, bro. Yeah. They're like they're not staying quiet anymore. Mm -mm. So what what um, I mean. You know, okay, you were a Jehovah Witness, but what as a kid, uh, how did it, how did it, uh, racism affect you? I guess because of the way I, I think I, I'm yeah. just guessing that racism affected you yeah. because of the stands you take on racism now. So, um, yeah, definitely in the city of Karehe, just growing up, you know, I I started working pretty young, like. Uh, legally, I started working when I was 16, but I started working in construction when I was like 14, 13. Yeah. But I had a car already at 16. So I I, re I noticed how not only racist but like how they would target me, you know. Uh, there was and I thought it was normal back then. Who would target you? Just cops, you know, okay. all the time. And uh, at the beginning, you know, I'll be in any city, they'll stop me, they'll search my car, and I thought it was normal. I, I'll get stopped twice, three times a day sometimes for no reason, and they'll search my car. And then, then in 2009, I ended up getting beat up by the LAPD. Okay. They mistook me for someone else. So when that happened, okay, let me ask you something. Yeah. I, I just have to ask you this. 
when you got stopped, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's it's always this thing where they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna check to see how you respond, right? right. When you got stopped, actually, I say yeah, actually I didn't get stopped when I the no. first time I got beat up. Okay, what? so actually my friend had gotten stopped. We were going to a party. It was like we were like ten cars deep, uh -huh. and he got stopped. So we had to wait for him across the street. Uh -huh. So I'm, I get off my car and I'm walking up to my other friend. Next thing you know, I just feel someone push me from the, from behind, and I'm on the floor, and I'm getting punched. I thought it was a regular person punching uh -huh. me. I thought I was like an enemy or something, yeah, whatever yeah, you know. Yeah. But then I felt a gun. The guy was pistol whipping me, hitting okay. me in the head. And then when I turned around, I seen it was a cop. Okay. Turned out that he left my friend there because he thought I was someone else. He thought I was someone that had shot his partner last the week before. Okay. And then the the female cop that was with him took care of my friend James. Nice. All, all I see is my friend James was laughing with her just like as uh, she was hanking, handcuffing him. Uh -huh. And he kept screaming at the cop like, why are you doing this? Whatever. And then he, he says my name and then he says the guy across the street's name. Okay. For some reason, that's when the cop realized that he had gotten the wrong person or whatever. And as, when I turn around, like he had this face like, like, like he's seen a ghost. And he's told me like, well, you almost, if you would have put your hands in your pocket, I would have, I would have I killed you right now. My partner got shot uh, last week and this and that. Okay. And he started apologizing. I, I didn't even end up, end up going to the party. I went home, like just being thankful I was alive. Right, right. And that was it. I didn't get a ticket. I didn't, I didn't do nothing. I, right, I was right. literally doing any, nothing. Right, right, right. And that's, that was the first time that I got, I got with that. And, and how then, old were you? I was probably like 20. Like 20? Yeah. And you, you think there were, at this point, you think they were just, were you dressed like a homie? You yeah. Dressed, okay. Yeah. So you think at this point they were just uh, uh, going after homies and, and yeah. just oh, yeah. fucking them up? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And, you know, prior to that too, like, I was friends with, you know, I had a couple of black homies growing up and I would see the difference. Like, when you walk into a store, people will stereotype me, profile me, sometimes think I was stealing and stuff like that, even when I wasn't dressed as a homie. Yeah. But then, like, my black homies, they would really get stereotyped. Okay. And then that's when I started noticing that. And I just didn't like that stuff, you know? Right. And then, um, so after the first time I got beat up, it happened again the next year. Again, I wasn't doing anything. We are with the homies coming out of a club. Okay. Cop stopped us as the cop is, you know, like I told you, it was. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was normal. So I, I would, like, search my car. I don't have nothing. So as he was interlocking my fingers, he ends up breaking my finger in half. Okay. So I started mouthing off. You know, you see okay. me on the videos, yeah. you know, like, yeah. I, that's how I got. I started okay. just talking crap. Right. So they tell all my friends to leave. Okay. So uh, they sat me down. It was, it was on, a, on a street that's industrial. So mm -hmm. there was no houses. No one will see anything. So as soon as my friends turned the corner, bro, yeah. five cops start kicking me, kneeing me in the head. They st I ended up getting a fractured back, concussion. I was bleeding all over. And same thing at that moment. But this time was different. I had uh, one of my homies' moms told me, get a lawyer. Do this, go to the city council meetings, and that's long story short. I did all that. Six months later, the whole police department was fired. They got they got rid of everyone because they were not only doing that to me, they had killed people, they were having relationships with underage girls, they were having transas with the with the towing company. Is this Cudahy? Cudahy Maywood, so yeah. And they have their own department? Yes, they did, had it before they had, not anymore. And, and and then you how old were you when you took this to court? 22, 22. And it went, it went, it went, it went all the way. Like it, was, it went all the way, and then after they got disbanded, I, I honestly, I was just so happy that they got disbanded. I didn't find out till, le till like two months ago that the case kept going till 2015. Okay. I stopped calling my lawyer. I didn't care, and they got dismissed in 2015. But I, I was just so happy that they were not going because, bro, they used to harass us every day, dude. Let me, okay. Yeah. Let me ask you something, bro. Uh, I'm devil's advocate. Yeah. Me growing up, man, there was, there was. And, and, and you, bro, you grew up in the streets and you were deeper, in, way deeper in the streets than mm -hmm. I was, but I knew a lot of the homies, right? Yeah. You know, and with me growing up, bro, there was dudes that were cool and like they looked after the neighborhood, they looked after other people. Right. And there were some bottles that were gotcha, bro. You know that. It's like good cop, bad cop, right? right. And the homies, bro, I always believed there's there bottles that, that would like, like where they were righteous, bro. Like yeah. they cared about about the people around, you know? And yeah. then there was ones that were chicken shit. Did you ever do, like, chicken shit? My mom, that's where you felt, oh, man, is this karma coming back to me? Or did that ever happen to you? With the cops or, like, no, 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 like that, like, hood stuff? No, no. Like, when that thing happened to you, when you get, did you ever, did you ever think, like, oh, man, that's coming back to me from this thing I did to somebody else? Did that ever cross your mind? Mm. Like, did 
Like obviously, if you're affiliated, bro, you 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 also, you 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 know, you had enemies. Yeah. So you you would you was you guys would go. Someone did something to your guys. You had to go find their guy. Yeah. And that's just the rules, bro. So did you ever I feel like, oh man, maybe this is karma? I I think I'd be dead by now because um, the enemies I have I've had that wanted to kill me, they they respect me now. Okay. You know? I never did them dirty. You know, okay. I never I never. You know, I was never into jumping someone or yeah. catching you slipping like that. Like, it, it was always fair fight. Right, know? right, right. So right. I, I don't think so. Um, okay, no, there no, is, there no, is, no, no. I'll, I'll probably say something. I'll, I, now that we're talking about it, right. I'll probably say something, something I've never told anyone. Right. Like something. There's, you know, we all have regrets in life. Yeah, right? for sure, bro. And there's one regret in my life that I do, and I grew up with two older brothers, right? Okay. And. I think that if I could go back in time, I would definitely not do it. Like, well, my my older brothers are they're closer in age with each other. They're mm -hmm. a year apart. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm the little brother, yeah. six years apart. Yeah. And I used to grow up. I used to see them mess around with the same girls all right. the time. You know, they right. used to do all, all that stuff. Right. And I ended up messing around with one of my brother's ex. Okay. But, and I feel like that was a mistake. Okay. You know? And I feel like till this day, I, I, I think about it like, man, like, yeah. there's something in there, there's some you know? Guilt, some, some guilt. Some guilt, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you don't do that, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. So, no, and that happened before I got beat up. So no, 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 you know? no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? Yeah. Um, It seems to me, uh, from what you're telling me, man, it was, um, no, you weren't you weren't one of those guys. Because, bro, there was there was guys I was growing up that were that were cool, bro. I remember yeah. when I was a little kid, I, they would have me, I would you know they're paying me to uh you know clean the rims and yeah. and then they were they were giving me money and they're you know and they, they they actually would give you advice bro like hey don't do what i do homes. yeah I was like, hey, you know the older dudes right yeah. so there were like there were dudes that were cool bro i mean to this day you know uh uh there, there's guys from uh, certain neighborhoods that uh, they're my friends and they're older bro they're all veteranos you know yeah but but uh so i was just wondering like was there a time that that you created all this negative energy and then yeah. may, maybe it came back to you? But you're saying you're saying you know you were just one of the cool homies and then and you were just uh uh yeah man there's there 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 is there is bad cops man. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you think there's good cops? Absolutely. There's people that are have you know have a good heart you know that could be in that position. But what what I'm against is the system. You know what I'm saying? So like. It's when I when after I got beat up with the cops, I, I really had hatred towards cops at that okay. moment. But then it died down. But then I started looking at the, the statistics uh -huh. right, and how they target black and brown people compared to white people. And it, these are all studies. So that it's like I'm more against the system. You know, when I see a cop, I see them as pawns. I don't I don't I don't hate the individual. You know, what I'm saying uh -huh. I'm not there. And I'm like. I, I treat cops with respect as, as soon as they, you know, I reciprocate the, what they give yeah. me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's, there's cops that, you know, if they're doing their shit right, I'm not going to be cussing them out. But at the end of the day, I'm against the system. The system needs changing. Until those numbers change, yeah. where black and brown people are not being targeted at five times the rate, right. then then that's when I'll start having respect or or just... And then, and then when I look at the history of how, like, KKK members and white supremacists said this in the 90s, we're going to mm. infiltrate the police system. And then when I see that... These fools are worse than the homies in the streets. Okay. These fools have internal gangs. Right. And in order for you to get initiated in the sheriff's department, you need to kill someone. Right. And shit like that, bro. Okay. And that's what I'm I'm not for it. And then there's when we say A cab, it's because the good cops, they stay quiet when they see the bad ones doing something. And then the ones that do say something, they get kicked out. Okay. They get kicked out. Like um Christopher Dorner, who went crazy and went AWOL and started killing people. He was a he was a cop that actually was a whistleblower. He he called out all the corruption. Then we have a couple. There's a guy right now suing I think uh, LAPD right now because he he was a whistleblower too. Okay. And he got retaliated against. So that's the thing. Is there good cops? Because the ones that do call out that corruption inside, they they don't last. So okay. So you don't think there's like like a a a, a large percent of them are good, and there's a few of them that are bad apples. So you would in, in your yeah. in your in your perspective in your your opinion yeah you you would say ninety percent are bad ten percent are good I think I think right now the, as a, as a system as a whole uh -huh. it's just all bad like, it's like someone saying you know back when Hitler was in power and okay. you had the Nazis right there's probably people in there that didn't want to be there but they were there they're probably good people you know what I'm saying uh -huh. because it was a large army whatever the Nazis but as a whole would you say Nazis were good it was just bad you know nah. what I'm saying. 
So right now the police force, and that's that's the thing that they so, don't, people don't understand, is mm -hmm. just the system needs to be changing. Those numbers are not looking good. You know, LAPD just recently re released a study how LAPD stops and stops and harasses black and brown people at a higher rate. But then out of all the white people that they stop, they actually have more illegal contraband. So that that is not good. You know what right. I'm saying? So until those numbers change, then, then uh, you know, I wouldn't join. I, I, I know it's a job, but I wouldn't join that type of job where you're, you're just being used as a pawn. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're being used as a pawn and you're over policing black and brown communities. And at the end of the day, you're working for, at the end of the day, you're working for this big thing called the prison industrial complex, which is a for-profit system Yeah. to lock people up, to lock black and brown people up at five times a rate. And then you have, and then when I look at history and I look at Richard Nixon mm -hmm. and Ronald Reagan, when they would laugh, when they created a drug war, that this was just a, a, a Trojan horse to target black people mm -hmm. and brown people. And that's when I'm like, damn, like, this shit gets deep, bro. It gets yeah, really no, deep. No, no, I, yeah. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, bro. But for me, and, and, and my point of view, you know, and my dealings with them, I, I, I wouldn't, me wouldn't be 90, 90% mm -hmm. bad, 10% good. It's, it's my, my uh, uh, dealing with them, Yeah. you know, but is there a bad cops? Absolutely. But to me, I always think about this, bro. Like, all the cities right now, that want it, that we're up for de uh, defunding the cops mm -hmm. are asking for more cops now. All those cities with 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 the um and listen, brother, I'm not mm -hmm. defending bad cops. Don't don't misunderstand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm for getting rid of a bad cop. I'm I'm for putting a bad cop in jail. Yeah. But they say, okay, let's defund the police. Oh, let's get rid of. The, I mean, extremists are saying let's, we don't need cops. We can police ourselves. Yeah. Extreme left. Mm -hmm. Some extreme left have I've, I have said that, and I, I've always thought like, all right, man, we're gonna have anarchy if we don't if we don't. So, are, are I mean, you we have that, it now. Are, are, are you do we have anarchy? We, I mean, I mean, we see it now. Look, the LAPD never got defunded. Right now, they actually receive more funding. Karen Bass, as much as people were saying that she was left, she's a centrist. She actually funded LAPD more, and. I don't know if you know this, but you know police across the nation only solve 2% of major crime. And this is like my number one slogan. 2% mm -hmm. of major crime. The police do not prevent crime. They come after the, the crime was committed. They write a report and they leave, right? What, what prevents crime mm -hmm. is actually programs for the youth. All these, all these, but, the, but then the, there's a problem that each city, because I'm a, I'm a, when I was a city commissioner, we have to look at the budget. It's 50 to 60, sometimes 70% of the budgets mm -hmm. are going to cops. And look what they're doing with the money. When you go to Huntington Park, they have a they have a robot that's policing the, the park. And then when there was an accident, someone came and, and pressed the button to emergency. That robot wasn't even connected to the station. And they're spending 75000 every quarter for that. There's uh, in the city of Southgate, they have a tank that okay. they don't ever use. Okay. And then you have Lamborghinis. I know sometimes they're gifts, but... They have they have Lamborghinis that for, are, are for cops. So is no, the no, money, but aren't those yeah. aren't those aren't lot aren't a lot of those cars that the the, the cars and the boats stuff yeah. that they seize, bro? From from no. like like, not the the tank that the city of Southgate. No, not the was, tank. Yeah, Obviously yeah. not the tank, bro. But, but but some of those some of those cars, some of those Mercedes, those those things that yeah. they get the jets. You know they 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 they, they you know not not all. I mean, I, but I, let's I, say let's say you have a house, right? You have a house and you have a, an estate, mm -hmm. and you hire police to come. You know, and there's crime every year. Okay. And the cop that you hired is only solving two percent. Do you think it's effective or it's logical for you to spend sixty percent of them of your budget for security on on that cop or that that police force that's not really solving anything? See, I didn't know that that uh, that statistic, bro. I didn't know about it, but I I have I I and here's my argument yeah. with with defunding the police and less police officers, bro. And it's for me, I, 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 I simplify it by saying this, and I want to hear your opinion. Yeah. You know, bro, there's, there's mechanics that'll rip you off. You can take your car to a mechanic, and he'll be chicken shit. It'll be like something where, oh, shit, I just connect this wire, and everything's back. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell him. I'm going to fucking say that it needed this part, it needed that part, it needed this part, and hey, bro, it's going to cost about two Gs to to to, to fix your car, right. and you're like, oh, fuck. So you pay it, guy's a dick, he's a shitty mechanic. And then there's a mechanic, bro, who I've taken my car to, my kids are taking their cars to, and uh, it says, oh, bro, don't even, don't even, don't even pay me. 
Yeah. You know, I got it fixed. So when I try to tell you, yes, there's bad cops, bro, and and there's needs to be changed. Yeah. But I'm more for my perspective, bro, is more for uh reform. So so there's there's a a group called Community Control over the Police. And he'll tell you this. He'll tell you like of course we're going to need some sort of policing in our cities, right? But the problem now is that there's a thing called qualified immunity with cops. If you're a cop, you come and shoot me mm-hmm. and it's so super unjustified. Okay. It's caught on camera. Mm-hmm. I can't sue you as a person. You still get your your pension, you still get you still have your house. If you get sued, if I sue you for shooting me, it doesn't come out of your pocket. It comes out of the taxpayers. Come out his pocket, his pocket, his pocket. They have to pay your lawsuit. And right now, the city of LA, um, for example, uh, Riverside County sheriffs have settled seventy-seven million dollars in the past five years, and that's all money that's not coming out of their pocket for their for their mistakes. There's other states that got rid of qualified immunity where the cops actually now they actually watch, they actually conduct themselves better because they know that if they mess up, they'll get sued. As a okay, person. what city is that? Uh, Colorado, the state of Colorado. But here in California, they have qualified immunity. Okay, so you're kind of like, yeah. you're kind of agreeing with me without agreeing. I'll tell you why. Because you I said, said reform. Yeah, I said, said reform. reform. Yeah. And so that would be a, a, a form of reform, you know, a and then, reform. Yeah, it will. It's to, well, to bring something that that's like that. And also, like, like maybe co- more nationwide. When they mess up, they, they need to have community control it. Like, you can't have the police police themselves, right? Yeah. That's the mentality that the group I told you about, community control of the police. They want the community, if let's say if you mess up, you shoot me by, you know, and it wasn't justified. Okay. What happens is that it gets, it gets thrown into an oversight committee that they're cops, mm-hmm. so they protect you, you know, and that's the problem. That's what we were tired of the, I think if you were to meet family members mm-hmm. of people who were shot unjustified, and it's no, all I've there. seen it, bro. Yeah. I, I've met anybody, I, I've seen it, and obviously, bro, I'm human, you know. Yeah. I, 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 it, it touches everyone who, who mm-hmm. watches this, bro. But to me, I'm, uh, I'm saying I'm up for one of the things you said. I'm up for, yes, let's distribute the money better to, to youth, you know, uh, to, 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 to get the kid to uh, early. Yeah. Right. But do you think and, it's fair? Sorry. Do you think it's fair that a barber has to go to school for two years? Uh, and, I was getting, no, 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 bro. And, bro, and you the let me finish. Six months, yeah. Let me finish. Yeah. And I believe they need better education, yeah. way better, bro. And I think because the fact that they deal with so many uh, 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 people, when they deal with people at different levels, you know, with high stress, right when you stop somebody, you're stressed out, bro. Yeah. Even though I'm getting stopped for a ticket, I'm already, I'm already a little stressed out because the lights comes, a, comes a guy with a, with a gun, like. It, but if you, I believe, if these police officers. In reform, if there's real reform, you you they get better education. Man. So you you kind of are for defunding too, because for example, I know of several LAPD officers, and they tell me ninety percent of these calls, bro, I don't even want to go to these calls. You know, they should send a mental health specialist to deal with someone who's like not all there or whatever. You know, and that's basically what the defund movement. That's what it was. Like instead of having cops roll up to someone who's, for example, there was a kid in the city of Cudahy who was mm-hmm. autistic. He's a child. He's 25 years old, but he has the mentality of a five-year-old. You know what the sheriffs? You know what the sheriffs came in? They came in and shot him in the back, yeah. and he was sitting in his couch. He couldn't understand what they were saying. He he was he's a, he has a mentality of a right, five-year-old, right. and because he didn't listen, they told him to stand up, and he he didn't know what to do, and he was sitting down, and he just turned around. And they shot him in the back, right, you know. Right, right. So the defund movement, what they wanted, they wanted those, they wanted mental health specialists, people with more training, to go to these type of calls. To be able to de-escalate the situation, not someone who didn't even go to college and only has six months training. Okay, yeah. so here's here's where I'm with, 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 with what you're saying, bro. Yeah. I'm saying if you're gonna be a police officer, and and your job is to deal with humans and their livelihood, I believe that a a police officer should have, uh, I, I don't know, man. Four years of psychology, yeah. you know what I mean, where where you learn uh, human behavior, like you said, not just six months, whatever. Yeah. So I'm I'm all for that, and I, I think, uh, I think someone like you is gonna is gonna uh, open up people's eyes. That's mm. why I, I love what you do, bro. I love I love that you uh, you put a you put a a spotlight on on the things that are needed. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, we get, we agree yeah. and disagree a little bit, but I think we're both like in the same direction, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, because listen, man, what if what if what if we have um what if we keep defunding, 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 right? Let, 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 mm -hmm. Hear me out, bro. And then uh, and then uh, let's say you, you even cut their pay. Let's say even that. Let's say you know they don't have the best equipment. Man, have you have you ever been uh, have you ever seen the police from Mexico? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been stopped by a cop in Mexico? Yeah. Bro, they don't even ask. They don't, there's no rights. Yeah. No fucking rights. Mm -hmm. There's no cameras. They'll laugh at you. If you if you tell a cop in Mexico, "Hey, I know my rights." They'll fucking they laugh, bro. Yeah. And yes, yes we have cops that do that here, but not to that extent. So to well, me, they're getting exposed now too. Yeah. Who Mexico? Mexico? Yeah. Well, I'm glad, bro. Yeah. I didn't know that yeah. because I, 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 if if anybody's ever robbed me, bro, Shit. nobody's robbed me more than Mexican cops. No, I remember back in the way they used to take us into dark alleys and Rosarito and you know take all their money. And yeah, stuff like that. that but, happened to me, bro. But now you have like these big time YouTubers go out there to to TJ and expose them, and then now like they're they're not as bad as they were 20, 15 years ago, but they're also be, they're also bro, things those are those, changing. Those are straight out criminals, yeah. bro. They're yeah. not even. I yeah. mean, bro, you, if you if you like pull out your license and registration, they just tell you, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Give me your wallet. I just straight up, up like that. that. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm just uh uh in in, in my point of view of def defunding them and cutting their pay and and not giving them proper equipment. I just don't want it to get to that level, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, cops here in this country. But I'm all for getting yeah. rid of the, the bad ones, bro. Yeah. Putting them away. And that's what going we did to jail, it, All yeah. that. I'm, I'm all for that. Cut it, hey man. It's night and day. How it was back in 2006. Yeah. How you would you would drive down Atlantic Boulevard uh -huh. in the morning. You have five cops stopping everyone. And if you were undocumented, they'll take away your car. Now, if you go to Cut it, hey, uh -huh. you probably won't even see a cop. Probably for days, un unless someone calls the cops, they'll show up. The sheriffs. It's totally different now. Totally and is different the crime now. up or down? Actually, the crime has actually gone down. On in 2018, we made a top 50 safest cities in the in the in the, in the state. Really? Yeah, it's actually it, gone down. And now in Cudahy, we actually have youth programs. We have the Cudahy Youth Foundation. That if you have a child, then we'll pay for your sports. We'll pay okay. for the equipment. Well, everything's free. We pay for it because we have our, fun, our that funding. So that actually, if you if you know, bro, like kids. The majority of the time that we were messing up back in high school because mm -hmm. we didn't have those programs, you know. I wouldn't we didn't have, have shit, bro. Yeah, we didn't have nothing. I have nothing. Yeah. I, could, I could barely eat. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not playing around with you. I, 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 you know, pase yeah. hambre's way. You know what I mean? And then so another I know thing that too, stuff. like you know, it's, it, get, it, could, it could get, you know, I could be here all day talking about how why crime has gone up, you know, and, and we were talking about it, it being chaotic. It's already chaotic. We have more funding for the LAPD. You see more people. Um, Doing the dining and that no, what is it? The the smash and grabs, smash and, all and, that. Grab. and yet no one has gotten the funding. It's still happening. Why? Because the economy has gotten worse during the pandemic. Billionaires profited three hundred billion dollars in our communities as a as a working class or mm -hmm. middle class. Mm -hmm. We lost three hundred billion. It was a transfer of wealth. Okay. And now, when I seen that happen in twenty twenty, okay. I was like, man, it's gonna get worse. You know, and that's why we see street vendors getting robbed, poverty okay. and crime. Okay, and let money. me ask you yeah. this, bro. We grew up poor as fuck. All right, uh, my mom, an immigrant lady, was able to buy a home. Yeah. All right, obviously, and, and a lot of it had to do with me helping too. Yeah, it's a different fucking story, but yeah, um, uh, 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 you know, my uh, my my ex, my ex in laws, immigrants, they didn't have a lot, bro. Yeah. I ate beans and rice. I ain't kidding you. For like four years, we yeah. had we used to have like a, a trash can full of rice and mm -hmm. trash, bro. I don't believe. I mean, that could have been a perfect excuse for us to say, you know what? Fuck that. I'm, I'm going to go rob somebody. I'm going to go rob. I don't, I believe somebody, they, there's got to be some accountability too, bro. Oh, of course. I don't believe it all can be like, oh, the economy's bad. I'm going to go rob. I'm going to rob stores and I'm going to rob fools and because the economy's yeah. bad. Where's, where is the, the, the balance of saying, yeah, okay, I'm poor, but let me do some problem solving. Let me figure out yeah. uh, how, I can I can uh, get out of this poverty. I think as an individual, it, you should have accountability, but it's a given. You know, okay, when when you have several, when you have communities that are basically getting sucked dry for all the resources, you're gonna have crime. You're gonna have people trying to make a living or trying to reach another point of level. There's a lot of mothers out there probably don't have nothing to give their kids. You have fathers out there that get stressed out during the holidays because they don't have anything. Dad, bro. Yeah. And then now, <laughs> if you look at it, back in the 90s, because you said your mom bought a house, back in the 90s, the, the wage gap 
and 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 the rent was closer. Now we have the largest. No, now bro, it's getting bro, you it's don't easier understand. To buy we house. didn't. We didn't. Bro, we had no extras. Yeah, like zero, bro. No, but but if you look at in the nineties, it was so much easier for someone who was working class to buy a house compared to now. Okay, the, okay, the the, the 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 property. Yes, bro, yeah. I agree with you one hundred percent that 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 is an issue that needs to be also addressed. Yeah, to to help and and that's not. God, I hate that's nationwide, bro. People not being able to buy property from here to New York, man. You know that yeah, we have the uh, largest. Uh, you know, no, and, 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 and no, you know, what you're saying is, and a lot of people, a lot of the, the 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 older kids are. That's why they're at home longer, because they 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 can't you know go buy a condo or. Yeah. I agree with you, bro. I agree with that. That needs to be a, a big change. But my thing is, okay, I understand why these people go there, smash and grab, and they're robbing more and this and that. But I also think that there's. There's got to be some accountability accountability with that person that's poor, to to not not use it as an excuse. Bro. I think I think that accountability should also go for the people who are sucking our country dry. Like for I example, agree. these CEOs, we generate the most billionaires. And see, but you said also. Yeah. You said also should of go. Of course. So the, so there should be some accountability on of the course. people that are robbing, and 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 and, and, and accountability in, in the government, uh, where it's headed, where it's just rich and poor and mm-hmm. the middle class. Is, is almost yeah, because if you look at like, if you look at San Francisco, you look at LA. In order for you to live comfortably, you have to be making over four hundred k right now, a year. Okay, you know, and that's no one's making that. You right. know, no, no one in the hood is making. Right, that, right. You know? A lot of people are doing this because you know they gotta make ends meet. As far as accountability, and this is something that I kind of get the misconception that probably I never really got to say like with other people. Um, but me, me, I'm a testament of someone who changed. You know, okay, what I'm saying yeah. I'm a convicted felon. Okay. And there is accountability that like, no matter what, and this is what I tell everyone, nosotros que somos mexicanos, guatemaltecos, we got to try two times harder. We got to fight two times harder. Absolutely, bro. And, and the same thing, to get out, get out from any addiction, whether, whether it's alcohol, whether it was drugs, whether it's robbing, whether it's whatever it is, there has to be that, that accountability for yourself. But why not have that accountability and why not make it, why not me advocate to make it easier for the young homies who are going to come after me so they won't have to go through what I go through? So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to reduce that wage gap. I, you know? I, I, and I, okay, yeah. okay, I, again, bro, just yeah. devil's advocate, yeah. right? Here goes. When, when, when the uh, Jewish people first first got here, yeah, they were. I mean, the word ghetto is is it came from mm-hmm. the Jewish people, yeah, because they lived in ghettos. It's not it's not a hip hop word. Yeah, it's it not is. you know it's not something Latinos or blacks came up mm-hmm. with. Ghettos is 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 where Jewish people first lived, really impoverished neighborhoods, and they went through their their uh, struggles. Where their struggles and their, t- their racism, and then the, and then the, and then what, oh, and I think it was the Irish before them, and then mm-hmm. it was the Italians, and then it was the Polish. But everybody went through their thing, mm-hmm. you know. And I believe part of it as Latinos, uh, us here in this country as immigrants, you know, we 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 had to uh, uh, kind of pay kind of pay your dues uh, 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 in a way, yeah. you know. But the way I see it, also not. I, I like where you're coming from. Where okay, yeah, we're gonna pay our dues, but let's not get abused. So that's why I respect what you do, bro. Yes, exactly. You know? what I'm talking about. I, I, I want to see. Yeah. Uh, I want to see another one of your videos, bro. And uh, and then we'll we'll, we'll 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 talk about it. And you know what? Let's let's take a little break, bro. Let's take a little, let's take a little break. We'll come back and we'll see some videos. Oh. All right, for my fans that are catching me on the road, I'll be in Greeley, Colorado, at the Moxie Theater. And I'll also be headed to uh, Denver, Colorado at the Oriental Theater. I'll be in San Antonio at the Aztec Theater. And then I'll be in Houston at the House of Blues. All right, my people? Look forward to seeing everybody at these shows, these theaters, these clubs. Mad love. Let's have some fun, some laughs, some drinks. All right? See, see everybody soon. Love. Yeah, that was a good one. Was, was that all of it? Oh, uh, bro, because there's there's the one where he actually did the dirty deed, right? Yeah, yeah, he was w- messing with street vendors. He was just calling the cops, kind of like just being a, um, you know, he, there was a couple of vendors, and it's not even close to his house. It's probably like three minutes away, three blocks away. Okay, and he will show up, make sure he was there until the cops showed up, make sure that they would the, the vendors would be kicked out, and so he, we, he, he he was uh, it's harassing. Yeah, just basically harassing, and then. I hadn't even posted the video. My friends were posting his video when he was kicking them out. I usually like to get both sides of the story. Right, right. Always. Okay. So I show up to his house, 
And he didn't know I was recording him through, through my chest. I had a, like a little suit, like a little jacket. Okay. And he started telling me to go back to Mexico. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just heard him. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I just that's, heard. We still, that's when I showed up to his house. And that's basically what happened, man. And I was just like, all right, you know. So you just happened to catch him in, in his porch. Yeah. Right there. You just walked No, I, I knocked on his door and he came out. Yeah. Oh, he came out and just sat in his porch all cool? Yeah. And, okay. Man, so what, what ended up happening to this guy? Ah, nothing. I, I saw you guys showed up. Yeah. You guys, I mean, when you bring people, bro, it's like uh, it's like you bring a little, Mex little yeah. Mexico around their houses. Yeah, that's basically what <laughs> happened, man. It was just everyone. And it was a rainy day, too. I didn't think no one was going to show up. And we organized it. And then uh, I remember the banda had canceled on me last minute. I was kind of down. And then my girl tells me, I want to pay for it. She's like, I'm going to get a, a tamborazo. And I was like, nah, it's fine, baby. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she called the tamborazo. The tamborazo shows up. And it's just more people started sh showing up. And from what I know, that guy, I think his name was Robert. Um, Roger. He, Roger. There Roger, you go. Roger. Yeah. Uh, Roger disappeared off the grid bro like he completely. sold his house no he he's still there that was the other guy that he ended up selling his house yeah i heard about one of the, one yeah. of the guys sold his house so, so yeah. what did this guy do this guy well he just toned it down bro yes look at queríamos you know we want him just to calm down relax like stop being a karen stop calling the cops on people just trying to make a living you know and and, and that was just one day that you guys went and did that or you guys yeah. did it it was uh yeah one day because after that I think uh, people just kept going around. We were going to plan another one, but it was just one day. That was it. And, you know, he didn't like... That's the thing. Like, you go out there, he goes out there, and he, he humiliates the vendors, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So that, to him, I think at the beginning, he kind of felt like he was going to be able to take the the the, infam the, the, the bad fame, la mala right. fama, like right. I like to say. Right. And he did, I know he deleted his social media accounts for a while, and then I think he barely started popping up on Instagram like maybe like a month ago. But... And he's Latino, like, right? Yeah. Okay. Like I told people, like, as long as he doesn't do it again, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope he learns a lesson that people are not going to condone that, you know? People are not going to... And then he, he, you know, a lot of people don't think, that they think like, oh, that's, there's a taco stand. They assume they don't have a permit. And then they don't even know that permits don't even exist for taco stand. They're just trying to make a living. And and what, what pisses me off more, bro, yeah. is that he's a Republican. And that's not, that's not, the, the thing is this, he's a Republican okay. and he's for less taxes. He's for sometimes even paying no taxes. So when you're a Republican, you're for the free market and less regulation. But then, like, to me, it's hypocritical that you're going out there and you want the government to get involved with the taco stand. But, yeah, you preach no taxes somewhere else. Right, right. Does that make any sense? Yeah, Does that make yeah, any yeah. sense? And that's what pisses me off more because it's like it's a hypocrisy, you know, to me. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, man, you, you seem to know a lot about the law, bro. Have you, uh, have you thought about going to law school? Has that crossed your mind? Um, I think, you know, luckily right now we have, we have a lawyer in our team. His name is Christian Contreras. He's amazing. Uh, and right now we're building a new nonprofit where we're going to have paralegals having on deck in case okay. any vendors need. And I think it's just amazing the way it's working out. And I'm still learning, um, maybe in the future, you know, I'm, I'm always an advocate. But, but it just seems like, yeah. do you actually, like when you tell me things about the laws and, and city ordinance and things like that, did you, so you do, you do your research, right? You sit not, down and do some homework, bro. Not, not only that, like I had a, um, back in 2014, I got hired to work for a nonprofit and I started from the bottom. Yeah. It, it was a, the largest Latino nonprofit in the, that would, uh, advocate for Latinos in the whole country. And I started from the bottom, knocking on doors, registering people to vote. Okay. And when the the president, his name was Antonio Gonzalez, he noticed that I was breaking records. I was registering more people to vote than anyone else ever in one day, right? Okay. Then he found out I was Jehovah's Witness, and he's like, "Oh, dude, you, well, that I grew up Jehovah's Witness." He's like, "Dude, you grew like you have a lifetime of experience, I'm like knocking you're good. on doors." Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have a bachelor's degree, bro, yeah, nothing. Right, right, so he right. took me under his wing. Okay. I started, I, I became a, a field organizer. Then I became a national field organizer. I ended up becoming his right wing, you know? Right, right, right. And I worked with him for five years. And just the experience that I got from him, I didn't even know what a senator was when I started okay. working with him, bro. And he taught me everything I know. I still don't know what they do, bro. Yeah. What the fuck they do? So, <laughs> what do um, senators do? Hey, son, you went to college. What the <laughs> senator do? Uh, Basically, I mean, sit they, they, and they, they, sit around on the table and I don't vote. Think none of these guys do. Yeah, I don't think they do shit, man. So I, I learned from him, and then from there, I think it was the hands-on experience. And then just to me, I'm always an advocate to always. I I never stop learning. Okay. I always, you know, and I just read a lot. And basically, that's that experience that I got from him got me my job at USC. Got me so many places where I've had to manage people who have their masters and bachelors, right. even though I didn't have that. 
But I'm honestly, I think what you're telling me right now, I, I wouldn't be against that because it's never too late. Because time no, moves no, by. Sure. If I let's say if I would have gone to college in 2019, I would have graduated by now with my bachelor's. So I, I, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll do it. Bro, there's a great yeah. book. I think you, you would you would you would find uh, uh, that it would hit home with you because, and I always I recommend this book to friends of mine who are starting starting something new. There's a, a book by David Schwartz called The Magic of Thinking Big. And in the very first chapter, it talks about it's not you're not too old to do anything. And it talks and it gives you all these examples, bro, of of not to make that excuse. Mm -hmm. Great book, man. Sold yeah. millions of copies, but it, it it and you're still you're still a very young man, bro. Uh, uh, I I, I want to see I'm gonna see another clip and talk good. about it, man. You ready, DJ? A community event to support a vendor whose cart was destroyed. Rallying around a vendor whose cart was seen in that viral video pushed to the ground by a permit inspector. This was a scene in Alameda. It's called a community buyout. It's an event organized to support street vendors who've been attacked. Organizers say events like this are important because they help the vendor recover what they've lost. Street vending is an international way of living. You know, you go to any other country, you'll see it. You see it in India, Japan, in Europe. So it's important because the attacks have spiked 300% in the past 10 years. In three hours, they say they sold about 250 hot dogs and raised roughly $3,000. Yes, they say that's more than enough money to buy a brand new car. Right? You can't just push anyone, you know, like that's the wrong. You can't do it like that. I believe that Public Works and San Francisco has bigger fish to fry with all everything else that's going on. Public Works says it's investigating and released a statement. We train our employees in de-escalation techniques with the goal of diffusing tense situations. In this circumstance, we did not meet that threshold and we apologize. So let's continue applying pressure. I saved this screenshot. This was before I posted the SF Public Works and y'all went crazy. In a matter of hours, there's so many comments they got. I can't even imagine how many calls or emails they received. Y'all are the best. There you go. I like that, man. You're supporting street vendors, bro. There you go. I like that, man. See? We like that. See, that's how we're supposed to support. Because, that. see, that's how we're supposed to support. From the work support street vendors. And shout out to El Patio 510 for helping out one as well. And we had a great time out there in San Francisco. Hola, le quiero regalar esto. Es una gas pimienta. ¿Sí sabe qué es? Porque te lo chingues, güey. Yeah. Damn, bro. So, so uh, you ended up helping this this man get the guy who th who who threw his cart works for the city, mm -hmm. right? And he's actually like a like from when I seen it, he's he's in hyper like a supervisor. supervisor, yeah, right. And what was his reasoning for throwing this guy's cart? Like that was his way of getting rid of him? Or, or I haven't heard his reasoning, but uh, from my understanding is that they are known to be aggressive. Like they. If you're a vendor, they humiliate you. They but in San Francisco, people are taking a shit in the middle of the street. I mean, why mess with street vendors when you have drug addicts doing uh, 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 needles in front of everybody? I Bro, mean, I, that's, that's insane. That's what I said. They have bigger, way bigger fish to fry. In. Right. I still haven't been home. I, I I just came back from the Bay right now. I drove down and I have, I, I'm still up on my way back from the, that trip. Right okay. now. I still haven't been home. Wow. Um, so... It's crazy. I, I do. I had never seen a dead body in my life okay. in person. I seen my friend get shot and he died in the hospital later, but I had never seen an actual dead body like outside of a funeral home. Okay, right, right. right. I seen a dead body for the first time in San Francisco when just I was walking around. Yeah, bro. I went yeah. to the store and the guy was just laying there and I thought he was just laying there. And they, you know, like two seconds later they show up and they put the white thing over him. Yeah. And I was like, what the? Uh, but I don't know what it is, man. I think that guy's just trying to prove a point and that he's just trying to stop street vending with whoever doesn't have a permit, or whatever. But you know I think yeah and 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 the reason I, I think it happens so much bro is because they're 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 easy targets mm -hmm. they're the easiest targets they're they, a lot of them don't speak English yeah right and they're not good you know because I know back in the day the reason uh my relatives wouldn't say anything things like that uh is because they were afraid of getting deported yeah you know that was back then you know I remember my uncle coming home with his head busted up, 
uh, because they said that all these paisas took their jobs, right? So uh, their way of like scaring them was was bashing their heads, uh, from, uh, and uh, but you know they still went to work, bro. I mean they yeah. were they were stitched up, but they still but they didn't back then they would you know seventies, bro. Yeah. They're not gonna say shit because they're just afraid of you know la migra, but. Uh, I, I I I I love what you do, brother. I, re, I really I, I I think there's there's a movement that's catching. Um, and what's messed up is that that guy that was his only cart. That was all he had for the week. They took away his cart, and this buyout that we did for him was was what he needed. You know, because he if it wasn't for the buyout, he would have just like he said that he probably would have never worked again doing street vending because he lost it all, and now he's able to you know get a new cart and be able to to sell again and it sucks man that you know and i don't blame our our older folks who are who don't speak up because okay. they come from for example in mexico and guatemala too like activists like me they get killed right away you know what i'm saying they'll okay. kill you right away and out here oh yeah bro. i think i think out here i mean i'm not saying that it can't happen but it doesn't it's not like that i think yeah. from what i might experience here bro like they they they'll try to kill you legally they'll try to kill your character they'll try to you know, they, they've done that to me, too. Right. Like, um, I lost my job at USC because of activism. That Like, when I started exposing people, people would call my job, and they just got tired of, of getting so many calls, and they had, a, they, they had to make up an excuse and let me go. And I had a really great job at USC. So you're not working for USC anymore? No. no. And they let you go because of yeah. what you've been my doing? My activism, yeah. And what was the, what was the reason? Well, at the, at the first time, they wrote me up. They said that I was the face of USC because I was a project director for the Department of Social Work. And they wrote me up saying that they didn't want me to give out pepper sprays. And then they, they wanted me to stop being on TV so much okay. because I was doing interviews. But, yeah, I was like, this is what I do on my free time. Um, so Wait a minute. Can't you go and sue them now? You know what's crazy? I, I, you I, got a lawyer, bro. I, 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 Sick them. I, I was so devastated around that time. I went mm -hmm. through, like, some little depression in yeah, 2021. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't, bro. I, my heart wasn't in to get money out of it. I, to me, I was just like, I'll get back to that later. Mm -hmm. And I just started really getting into helping the vendors more. And luckily, I, I work who I work for now is the same people that I was working for when I was managing the the presidential campaign of Bernie Sanders. Okay. And they love it. Okay. So, and then I learned a lesson too to not put out who I who I'm working for right now because I know I'm pissing a lot of people off, right. and they're gonna want to get me fired. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Which is cool, you know. But I haven't done nothing wrong other than expose you. But I let them, you know, work the hard way to try to find out where I work now. But okay, how long yeah. ago did you lose your job? Twenty twenty one, bro. I think you, I can yeah. think you still get them, bro. Honestly, Thank you. yeah. I, I think I think if I think if if you sit down and have a heart to heart with your lawyer and then get him to get you know get like a little team together, yeah. you, I think I, there's no doubt in my mind. Not only that, get some back pay, bro. Yeah. And honestly, man, that's everything you do for somebody else. Do it for yourself. I you're know, like, right? That's you're what like you're <laughs> like that dude who fucking That's makes what my shoes. Dad tells me. <laughs> yeah, you like that dude who makes shoes for people, but they doesn't have any shoes. I know. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's you, what my dad you, tells like, me. Like, do that for you, bro. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you you gotta you you gotta count too. No, man, like listen, brother. Uh you, you the way you, you give all this energy out and you help all these people, and I believe this for us, for you yeah. to stay strong is you gotta be strong. So there's nothing wrong with you getting your your money and having some capital. So you can relax, cause you you everything we've talked about comes back to capital. You're talking about houses, you're talking about crime. Yeah. Everything. It's all about having capital. So there's nothing wrong. And I know you you just said it earlier, like, nah, man, I wasn't into making money. It's not about making money, bro. It's about getting what you do. You're not going out there stealing. They did something wrong. Go after them with that same no, right. attitude, bro. And go and and I, I want to and. I would love to interview you, uh, again, interview you again and, yeah. and, and hear about that part, man, because sure. you do, from everything that I'm hearing, bro, for them to let you go uh, 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 for that is like, you know, they should, uh, yeah, I think you got a good, I think, I mean, you know, I think you got a good fight there, bro. Definitely. But, uh, you. you know, listen, man, uh, I, I, I've been watching your stuff. I told I, I, I told uh, uh, DJ who, who I, I work with, I said, dude, we gotta. Uh, I, I want to interview this cat. I, 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 you know, knew a little bit about you, and uh, and like I said, you know, when we had the discussion earlier about certain things, man, uh, I think we're, we're kind of we're on the same page. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe just we may just maybe just not agree one hundred, yeah. but I think we're on the same page. And keep doing what you're doing, bro. Thank you, man. Uh, uh, you're gonna be uh, obviously. 
you already got the you already got the, the wheels turning, man. I just feel like it's a, a train that just started moving, and, uh, and and once once you're full steam ahead, bro, with with uh, with everything, you're gonna uh, you're gonna leave a mark, man, on on on, on 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 this planet, bro. You know, and shout out to everyone. You know, I, I this definitely wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to do it alone. We have a team. Shout out to everyone who you know helps out, and also I love to see the community rise up too. You know, there's times that you know I organize a protest, and you know, bro, like. You know, like in Santa Barbara, I was there and I showed up like 10 minutes early. Okay. No one was there and I, I went to go do something. I came back. There was like two. Santa Barbara, people. was that that lady? Yeah, yeah, that lady. You were that lady, yeah. right? Okay. That Then she ended up apologizing. She ended up apologizing. Yeah, I, and Was that you she was apologizing yes. to? Yeah. Okay. And what about that uh, that guy who got fired? The guy, I think it was the Armenian guy who got fired from the... from. I'm still trying to get that guy. I'm oh, still not okay. satisfied with that. He, he got uh, fired from his high school job, but I know he owns a business and... He also teaches out of college, so yeah. I'm still like, I was like, fuck that guy. I was like, he was like, you're calling us illegals, man. Yeah. I'm mad. Yeah, you know, there's... there's hey, bro, th- listen, man. Yeah. We, I need you to back me up with, with Hollywood, bro. We got to take this to Hollywood because being a Latino, a comedian in Hollywood, fuck them too, bro. Yeah, man. They're racist motherfuckers, bro. We need to go protest those fucking studios. Hell yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I need you there, man. We'll bring, we'll bring fucking mariachis, tamborazos, everything, bro. <laughs> we'll fucking bullfight in front of them. But uh, yeah, we gotta do that. No, nah, sure, hey, man. brother, listen, man. All joking aside, man. Awesome. What you do? Anything you want to tell uh, uh, your people, man? The, the the ones that follow you and then my followers, man. Yeah. I uh, ch- check this cat out, man. T- tell me your, your handles, bro. Yeah, enamorado Alex underscore. So it's E N A M O R A D O Alex underscore on TikTok and Instagram. And you know, shout out to you, bro. I've been watching you for years. Uh, like I was just telling Wendy on the way over here. I, I you know when I got the message that. You know uh, about this. I was excited. You know, okay, cool. uh, I've been seeing your stand up, and this is one thing I say. I think uh, comedy is very important in our lives. Yeah. It's and and the hard work that you guys do. Um, it's it's saving lives. I'll no. be honest with you, because comedy makes life worth living, man. Like there's my, one of my best times ever is just going to you know Hollywood Improv and just on a random night and then just laugh my ass off for like you know there's times yeah. I can't stop laughing for five minutes and. And it definitely makes life worthwhile, man. Definitely, you know, that's why people pay money to go see you guys because it's, uh, you know, people work five days a week, hard yeah. some seven days a week. Yeah. And those moments that you guys create, man, and, and, and you make, uh, you find that, that the comedy in life, and it's very important, man. It's no, very bro, important I, for I, mental I, health. I, 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 I'm telling you, I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lucky guy. I get these messages, you know, you get, like, I'm, sh- I'm sure you get them, bro. Which they're very powerful because you'll you'll hear you'll hear individual stories of how you affected them, and they'll say, "Hey, man, because of this, it changed me," and and I, and I just want to thank you. And they, they 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 you know, so you affected their lives. It might be like in a just little in a little uh, a way, but yeah. but you you feel good that you're able to be, you know part of something positive in someone's lives, yeah. right? Well, but, thank you. But you 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 know, again, man, thank, thank you, man. Thank you coming down. Thank for. Uh, Sharing everything and 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 being honest about how you feel and 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 I think your story, man, it's gonna it, it just just being you coming, you know, uh, uh, you, you coming up the you came from the streets, you were homie, you turned your life around, and now you're just, you know, this is this this whole way about how you turned everything, man. I'm sure that there's a lot of youngsters out there that you know that are uh, in the streets. And they're probably involved, you know. They're affiliated, and they're probably like, "Man, I, uh, I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I want, I want to do something uh, productive where I can, yeah. ha- you know, help people." You know, so I'm sure you, you, you're gonna affect a lot of people as well, bro. Thank you, thank you for being it. here, man. No, no mad love, bro. No, thank you, Th- thank you, homie. Thank you, Appreciate you, man. All right, everybody, man. You guys, thank you. Thank you for following me. You guys know my Instagram is at Willie Barsana. My uh, TikTok's at Willie Barsana. I I post uh, three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Right, Fabian? <laughs> Don't be lazy, fucker. <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> All right, guys. Love, man. I want to thank my crew. I want to thank X. Man, X, we're supposed to have a camera on you so I can talk to you a little bit. John, Fabian, we're going to get those cameras on the next show, man. All right? We're on a budget right now. Thank you, guys. (laughs) All right, peace.